Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanim. So, I oftentimes, when I'm ready to get into deep research, I begin to check in with um, already established uh, uh, partnerships, right? Websites, deals that were made, and I begin to ask myself some questions, all right? So, one of the first questions I asked myself today, as I was motivated by a very bullish mechanic, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> a very bullish mechanic sent me a message, uh, a direct message, and got me fired up. And I said, you know what, let's, let's see if we can pull some deep research up and jump into a few rabbit holes. A lot of my subscribers, a lot of my supporters, they're amazing, and they definitely keep me fired up and, and, and help me to want to continue to do the channel, okay? Um, and so one of the first things I asked myself, I said, let's, let's find out if there's any updates with Worldwire. And I check a, at least once a week on, on IBM blockchain, what's going on with IBM. I know a lot of information. A lot of it is not substantial, but I try to check up on Worldwire because once in a while they're, they, they will put out a blog on blockchain developments that is, um, very, uh, important to how they plan to use the Stellar pro Protocol, the XLM Protocol, okay? So as I'm looking into it, I went to IBM.com and I'm on their website and I'm not seeing anything substantial. Then I begin to ask myself a new question. Okay, who is using Worldwire? Now I don't have to go to IBM.com to uncover that. So I go to Google, I can use Google, DuckDuckGo. I mean, I could use Tor Engine if I really wanted to just do a raw search of all of the web, including the dark web. I could use uh, uh, Tor, uh, was it Tor Onion, Onion Browser, whatever. I might use that, but we didn't have to go that deep this time. I just used Google, okay? Um, and I and I typed in who is using IBM Worldwire, right? So that led me down a couple of pathways. One, I'm, I saw a lot of articles reminding me what the idea of Worldwire was. All right, the intention of it was, and it is similar to what Ripple intended for XRP, which uh, which is to replace the SWIFT system. So we need to start looking at XLM and remembering that that is what IBM wants it to do. They want XLM to replace the SWIFT system. Now, I, I fully believe that both XLM and XRP could take a big chunk of that market because everybody, for the most part, hates dealing with SWIFT for a myriad of reasons, okay? If you just do a search on the problems of the SWIFT system, it'll, it'll be very easy for you to find out why people are very upset with that system. So, that led me to going back to the SWIFT PDF that I, I put on the members only section for everybody if you wanna pull that up, okay? I went back to that, that was one pathway that it led me to because I wanted to know the numbers that could flow into Stellar if they were to take a portion of Swift's business or be integrated by Swift or completely replace Swift. All of those are possibilities. That's three different scenarios, which if you're doing uh, particular calculations with XLM, will lead you to three different price ranges for you to, let's say you wanted to sell, maybe you're staking your XLM, so you'll know how much you're getting in that uh, from, from staking, but it gives you something to work with. But you definitely will need to take a look at the SWIFT annual year financial uh, financial report, and it gives you all of the numbers, institutions. Now, circling back around, this makes a lot of sense as to why IBM is dealing with, did they say uh, a large portion of the top 50 banks? I think they said they're working with 44 of the top 50 banks in the world, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was something like that. It was a ridiculous amount of the top banks in the world. That makes sense if all of, their, all of them are in one accord and they're ready to use a new system that's beneficial to them in a myriad of ways. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? IBM's intention for Worldwire was always to replace SWIFT. I saw a bevy of articles about that. So that was one pathway. Another pathway, I was doing a search and I came across a company that Immediately when I saw it it, it, it said it wanted to utilize, it also wanted to utilize XLM to replace Swift. Everybody wants XLM to replace Swift, but, but this company in particular wanted XLM to replace Swift, Swift in Southeast Asia. Who else is, has just done big deals in Southeast Asia? XRP, 
like I said, they sort of go hand in hand. XRP and XLM are going to dominate in certain regions. And I don't, and, I, and the interoperability is a wonderful thing because with the amount of coins that they have, there's just enough, just enough for them to take a, a big enough piece of, of the market, but not piss off the legacy system at the same time. But that would make the price, if they could take over that region, that would make that price raise. I'm talking about a massive raise a toll. Make that a GIF, <laughs> GIF, GIF image, whatever. Raise a toll. Listen, okay, so, so I discovered this, not discovered, but I happened upon this other company, which has very interesting ties, which we will have to look deeper into also. Okay, now, so let's begin here. First, I just want to take a look at the Fedwire uh, system, right? Because uh, also, we know the federal government has done experimentations with a bevy of, of uh, cryptocurrency banking rails. XLM was one of them, okay? Uh, but we don't know who they're going to use, if they're going to use any of these particular banking coins, cryptocurrency rails. We're not certain of that yet. They're still in the research phase. They haven't made any solid decisions, but we'll see. Um, we know that they have deep ties with Algorand. They love Algorand. We know that they've utilized, at least tested XLM. Uh, we know that um, XRP is definitely in there. They have deep ties. Even they have a member on the Faster Payments Council Board for the United States. So XRP is definitely in there. It's definitely a possibility. Uh, but with all of these, but especially XLM, now that they are uh, sort of cozying up to the United States government, and a lot of the states, they have, the Stellar Foundation has very good relationship with a lot of the states within the United States, okay? Um, is This is something good to look at, but this is the lighter of the things we're gonna cover here. So let's just get this out of the way first, okay? So Fedwire Fund Service, this was in, in December. This is one month. I just wanna give you an idea of the money that could be flowing. Not to say we're gonna take all of it. People get a little ruffled under the feathers when uh, they may misinterpret what you're saying and, and think that you're saying that it's, it's going to, like it's a guarantee that it's going to take all of that money. Like, no, but let's just say a piece of it, okay? But look at the money we're talking about that could stand to flow through a banking coin like XLM. Of course, there's growth into the future. Take that into account. Everything in steps, little by little. Um, transfers originated. This is the number in just in December, 2021. And this is in, is this in the millions? Let's just go with the raw number here and then I'll post it on the screen and then you can do your own interpretation if I read this incorrectly. 19,024,135, okay? Uh, monthly value growth, 11.8%. That's very healthy in my opinion. Average value per transfer. Here we go into the millions. Average value per transfer. Keep in mind, like I said, a lot of what XLM could stand to do uh, is intra-bank payments. And this is what another thing IBM was positioning uh, Worldwide for was cross-border remittances for banks. Not just large financial institutions, but for banks. This is why a lot of their, their infrastructure is set up for banks, <laughs> central bank digital currencies, okay? Um, but just let's take a look at this here. Average deal, average value per transfer, five million dollars average. Five million dollars average. That's extremely good. Let's take a look at the average daily volume of transfers. Okay, this uh, it doesn't give an idea of how much this is. As, as this is in the millions, it doesn't say that. So let's just take it as the raw number. Okay. I'm giving this to you as I'm thinking right off the top of my head, trying to interpret the, the, this data right in front of you, okay? So I might mess up here and there. That's why I'm putting it up here for you if, you've got to, if you have to do your own calculations. 827,136 average da daily volume. If you have, let's say if that's the actual number, even if you have that number on Stellar blockchain, right, or a piece of that, and then you have the average value of $5 million. That's in addition to any B2B transfers. That's in addition to any P2P transfers. All of this together, that's in addition, I, I know I'm saying that a whole lot, that's in addition to any real estate value moving across Stellar in the future. That's in addition to any, <laughs> please, how many times is he gonna say addition? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, that's in addition to any stock value, tokenized stocks that move across Stellar in the future. 
my goodness, there's so much value that could stand. There's no guarantees to move across Stellar. So you see where I'm going. Average value is $5 million. Okay, average daily value of transfers total, total. This is in the millions. So really what we're looking at is trillions when you read the number, 4 trillion, 191 uh, billion, 226 uh, million dollars. So pretty much $4.2 billion in average daily total value of transfers, if I read that correctly, okay? That's just in December. Now, like as I said before, that's the lighter end of the data, of the research. Let's move into the middle now, where, where the middle I consider to be where I went down the pathway of the SWIFT, okay? Because if IBM intended for Worldwire to replace SWIFT, even if they bundle St Stellar Protocol into their, hi their hybrid financial cloud because they had their financial offerings for the banks, everything was getting congealed so they can give them all, uh, everything in one product. So you had HBAR for the data and smart contracts and such. Then you had XLM as their uh, cross-border uh, 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 fiat currency rail, banking coin rail. Okay, so they were bringing everything together. Also, keep in mind, they were pairing this with artificial intelligence. And it's my estimation in the future, we'll see what happens, that quantum computing will come, in, come into play at some point. But that's a little bit in the future. We'll see if I'm correct on that. But as of now, everyone is starting to uh, try to implement artificial intelligence. That's going to make everything that much better. Ripple is doing it. IBM is doing it. I'm going to think that people are going to start implementing artificial intelligence across the board. When it comes to the banking coins, we'll see. Uh, but when we go here, we look at the, the region. Most of the regions that are starting to become uh, very, very accustomed to the idea, the possibility of using the banking coins, XLM, XRP, HBAR, Cello, Algorand, Algorand is deep in Europe. All of these regions, if you look at this map here, let me, I might, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this and try to put it up here. Um, they're all regions <laughs> that are being afflicted by the SWIFT system. And this tells you what? You have Europe here, they're, they're very deep with Algorand, XLM, and XRP. They're deep over there. Um, you have the Southeast Asian market. You saw what they just did with XRP. And they already have been deep with XLM for years. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. All of these regions have been dominated by SWIFT, controlled by SWIFT. Keep in mind, SWIFT has been weaponized, right? But if you look at this map here, it's, um, and I'm gonna take a screenshot right now, just bear, <laughs> bear with me. Hopefully this comes out correctly. Sometimes I press the buttons and it doesn't go right the first time. And it's doing nothing. What is wrong with my computer here? There we go, okay, so. <laughs> but it's showing, it shows that those regions are ready to move on to something else and if they are, already have a, a, a legacy system such as SWIFT set up and, and yet they're looking at something else that tells you they're ready to move on to something else. This is the time to strike. This is the time to pounce, that the time is at hand. It's very close, okay? So um, it's just a matter of time before these coins and my humble opinion, not financial advice, I am not a financial advisor. It's just a matter of time before these coins experience a burst based on their utility, not speculation, not the rise and fall of Bitcoin, them being tethered. No, they will break away once they're fully being utilized, infrastructure is set up and everything is rolled out. It just takes time. Unfortunately, we can't force it anyway, even if we wanted to go faster, we can't force it. So you see either be patient or you will not see that money. <laughs> it's one of the two. Um, I, for one, am gonna be here to the end to see what happens, okay? but. Just give me a moment. I'm just saving this um, this little screenshot right here. But if you take a look at these regions here, okay, um, yeah, they're all using Swift system, and they all seem to want to move on. Now, let's go on to some numbers here. Total fin messages. I I did this, I believe, in the XRP video recently, but it applies here now that I'm remembering what IBM intended because I was treating the IBM CBDCs and the IBM um, usage of the Stellar Protocol for cross-border remittances almost like it was just a raw digital currency. And not remembering that it was intended to replace SWIFT, that changes a lot. That changes a lot. Um, so you have uh, total FIM messages, 9.5 billion messages, okay? And uh, you have FIN availability is 99.99%. That's actually pretty good, honestly, for such an old system. Cross-border traffic on GPI is 75%. Countries and territories, 200 plus. 
This tells you how far um, the banking coins have to go and why it's going to take time for everything to be set up. SWIFT is in 200 plus countries and territories. How many countries is, is, is Stellar really in? Ripple really in? They're in a good amount, but nowhere near, in my, in, in my estimation, nowhere near 200 plus. So there is still a lot of growth and development. So if we're expecting a parabolic pop, so to speak, off of the little bit that they have done in these, this past decade or half of a decade, whatever the time, time frame might be, how much more over the next 10 to 15 years? Now, I know most people are not going to wait that long. I understand that, but I'm saying, let's say you sold half your coins and you keep half, you're still looking at um, growth, over, a, a healthy amount of growth of that money, of that capital over time because there are so many more countries for the banking coins to build corridors in. And I think the whole world will be open because it seems that most of these regions are tired of using SWIFT. Now, there is a problem when it comes to, and we're going to go a little further, there's a problem when it comes to just the United States because of regulatory clarity. That Those are the corridors we really, really want. That's definitely going to make those prices go unbelievably insane. And I think that's why the legacy system is fighting so hard, right? Because they don't want to give up those corridors, money, power. There's a whole lot at stake here, okay? The rise of new ways of thinking and such and, and new authority figures, of course, because when you have money, you have power, you have authority. Um, 200 plus countries, we have a long way to go. That's And that's a good realization that even with all of the calculations everyone's been doing, you have some people on YouTube that are absolutely brilliant at doing calculations and doing price predictions, absolutely brilliant chart readers, absolutely brilliant researchers. Even with all of that, there's still so much more to be uncovered. So when people say generational wealth, they're not kidding. Okay, so, but let's continue on here. Increase in GPI corridors, 40%. So they've been making a little push, but as you see, we're pushing even harder. Stellar, XRP, Hedera, Algorand have been pushing into new corridors and that's going to force us to have a, a negotiation, uh, a stronger negotiation point at the table later. If we can take all those corridors in Latin America, in Europe, and in Southeast Asia, uh, we can. It, the more we can scoop up, the more the legacy system will have to listen when we come to the table. It's either you want to integrate with us, you want to speak with us, you want to use these particular rails, uh, partner with us or you're going to get taken over because because there's no way you can compete now You saw uh, Stellar is doing a lot of hiring right now, right? Ripple's doing a lot of hiring right now This is so they can continue to expand of course, but this is also so they can continue to advance the protocols I've been saying this for a long time if we can keep the, the protocols advanced and we remain stronger, faster, more efficient than the SWIFT system, then we sort of have them in a headlock and they have to tap out. We sort of have them in a rear naked choke and they have to tap out at some point, okay? They have to tap. They have to come to the table. They have to negotiate or else they're going to be in trouble. Pair with that, pair with that the fact that um, most of the world, for whatever their reasons might be, they don't want to use the dollar as the world reserve currency anymore because it's just too much power and control that they feel the United States has over them. So they're looking for a new world reserve currency. And right now with interoperability, you can sort of consider all of the cryptocurrency banking coins and to a lesser extent, the stores of value because the world kind of looks at the banking coins and stores of value coins as one in the same, even though that's not the case. But the world is sort of looking at crypto as a whole when it comes to fiat currency rails and store value as one. So there is a possibility that the world can begin using, it could be uh, all of the interoperable banking coins all together as a MBDC, MCBDC. I think that's what they might do actually is classify all of these as separate from the regular um, cryptocurrency coins and tokens because they're banking coin rails. They're made to move money back and forth efficiently. So classify them all together in one group so that they can be utilized as a world reserve currency or, I mean, there's another way to do it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. It's just something to think about, but they're looking for something else and these uh, banking coins could be it. If not all of them together as an MBDC, MCBDC, then maybe one of them, who knows? I don't know, um, but that's an idea to start building on as a possibility if you look at where everything is going, okay? So we have this little bit of information. We can go a little bit deeper, but then this video will be extremely long. Um, <laughs> so let's move on a little bit. So I was saying before, 
you have um, IBM working with, I think they said 44 of the top 50 banks in the world. We went down this list before. Of all of these banks, you have JP Morgan on here, Bank of China on here, BNP Paribas on here, HSBC on here, Bank of America. I said before, Bank of America, they have their hands in, XRP, in the XRP pot. They also uh, won a contest utilizing XLM. They wouldn't do that if they didn't like XLM. You can look that up for yourself. And we covered that on the channel. They won a contest utilizing the Stellar blockchain building off of XLM. Um, they wouldn't do that if they didn't like the protocol. They could have used any protocol in the world. They chose to use XLM. They, they definitely, they're definitely deep with XRP. Okay, so Bank of America is on here. Credit Agricole, Citigroup, Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group. I mean, it just keeps going. Wells Fargo. So what I'm iterating here is big money is involved when we're talking about IBM and their financial offerings when we're talking about IBM. And of course, their financial offerings includes Worldwire, includes the Stellar blockchain, includes that system that they built, whatever they're going to call it, to replace the SWIFT system. It includes that. This is big money here. Goldman Sachs is in here. Lloyds Banking Group, UBS Group, China Mutual, China City Group. I mean, Credit Suisse Group, Bank of Nova Scotia. Do you see where I'm going here? Okay, so there's big money on the table. It's just a matter, it's just gonna take time. There is a lot of juxtaposing, there's a lot of legality that needs to be sussed out. There's a, there's a lot of um, infrastructure that needs to be set up. There's so many different facets that we're waiting. We're, we're waiting to, um, to come to fruition. We're waiting to be set up. We're waiting to be activated. There's so many different pieces. This is a new system. So it's not as simple as just rolling out your token and then oh, there's a parabolic run, everybody gets rich. It's not as simple as that. This is going to be very, very complicated and um, it's going to take some patience. Um, there's going to be a lot of resistance. There, there already has. But I say this because there's so many people still that come into the comment sections and they're like, well, the price hasn't gone up in so long and the price, th this price right now doesn't matter. That's not what they were made for. If you're looking for quick money, this is not it. This is not it. They are part of a new system that's going to take a, a while to set up. Two to three years, three to five, who knows? Ripple set four in a recent document. So it's going to take some time. Um, and that's apart from everything else. <laughs> that's just infrastructure. That, that's apart from everything else. Regulatory clarity, everything else. This is not a get rich quick scheme. That's not going to happen. Um, I mean, is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Is, is it probable? That, I, I can't get, really give you a number on that, but it's going to take time according to everybody, and I agree with that. It's just definitely going to take some time. This is not get rich quick. This is the patient game. There's quick. There's lots of quick money out there, including selling NFTs. If you need quick money, you can always sell NFTs. You don't have to buy them and then trade them. You can make your own NFTs. Learn how to paint. Learn how to draw. Um, Look at the styles that are out there. You can do anime style. You can do hyper realism. It, it takes time. Like right now, I'm making NFTs. It's going to probably take me two, three months to, to finish these new NFTs. Then I'll put them out. I have more of a fine art style, okay? But that's not everybody. You might, you can make simple NFTs, but you can sell them if that's what you need is like some quick money. You can sell them. There's a lot of people just buying up NFTs these days. Um, and you choose what your prices are going, going to be. If you want to go by the market, if you just want to price them. But what I'm saying is, that stuff, yes, that stuff can be quick money. Regular crypto, meme coins, NFTs, that's quick money. Banking coins, not quick money. It's a part of a system that's going to change the world and anything that significant is going to take time. And anything that significant is the only thing that is worthy of being, um, of having the, 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 the um, phrase attached to it, generational wealth. That's it, that's it. That's why it's worthy of having that. All these banking coins, earn that title because of what they stand to do. And that's going to take time. Good things take time. Um, but let's continue on here. We got a lot to cover still. Um, so during my search, I came across a uh, company called LightNet, uh, uh, LightNet, which is based in, I think, Thailand. I love Thailand, by the way. I would love to go over there and visit quite soon. Um, have a nice little vacation. Maybe I'll buy like a little house over there or something like that. I don't know, but I love Thailand. But anyway. <laughs> Lightnet. Lightnet is is trying to set up Stellar XLM to replace Swift in the Southeast Asian markets. Let me say that again. They're trying to replace Swift in the Southeast Asian region. OK, um, and they have some very interesting ties here on the Lightnet.io website. You have Uni President as a partner, Hashkey as a partner, Signum Capital as a partner, Do Capital as a partner, Inception, Seba. 
Kyber Network, Everest uh, Ventures uh, uh, Group as a partner, CP Group as a partner, Hanwha as a partner, of course, Stellar, they're using XLM, of course, Seven Bank. Oh, oh yeah, let me, um, I don't know if I have this article up here. The, uh, um, <laughs> this company or a company they're associate, associated with, the, I'll see if I can pull it up to get clarification on this, actually one of them, this company or a company associated with them actually um, owns all of the 7-Elevens in Japan. Uh, I mean, and it goes a little bit deeper. Can you, all, can you imagine all of that money flowing through XLM possibly? Keep in mind, this is a company who's using XLM as a fiat currency rail. They wanna replace SWIFT in that region. So, I mean, if you own all the 7-Elevens, wouldn't you use XLM in the 7-Elevens to move the money back and forth and such and, and, and transactions? And that's a lot of volume that, that could possibly be there. But let's just scroll down. I'll try to get more clarification on that before I say anything officially, but, but I'm giving you an idea. I uncover some good stuff here. Introducing LightNet Asia's leading cross-border remittance network provider, right? Frictionless settlement hub for Asia with real-time transfer that is fast, affordable, and secure. Cross-border remittance LightNet aims to create a global network of trusted financial services partners that provides the most interoperable, efficient, and cost-effective payments capability available today. We believe in an inclusive ecosystem that bridges the gap between existing banking rails and non-bank agent networks. Muy linda, mi gente. Will increase profitability for all our partners and enable seamless cross-border transactions for the unbanked and underbanked throughout Asia. Really what they're trying to do, they have a little map here. Let's screenshot that one. Also, we're going to try to put that in the video here. I'm doing all this right on the spot. Um, everyone here can thank a very bullish mechanic, a very bullish mechanic who fired me up and really made me uh, feel like I want to do some real, real deep, deep research here. Um, for this, all right? But if you look at the map here, and then you look at the map that, that Swift covers, it's the same region, <laughs> it's the same region. So it's not like, I mean, it's not like they didn't have a system. They're trying to get rid of Swift, all right? It's the, literally the same region that Swift currently dominates. This company is trying to use XLM to replace Swift. So I think what we're gonna see over the years in these regions as people start to, as, as businesses and people and banks begin to see in those regions, ones that haven't used the banking coins as of yet, begins to see the success of utilizing the system, you're gonna see everything start to spread out and increase. That's the brilliance of, of all of this, all right? So let's continue on here. So then we have a little tidbit here on the remittance market uh, in Asia, but this is from 2018, but it's just to get an idea, okay? It's from aric.adb.org and it says, Remittance receipts to Asia to Asia hit another record. This is in 2018. Asia received around $302.1 billion in remittances. In remittances. The largest amount out of the global total of $682.6 billion. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're trying to scoop up. And that's just... And that's just a piece. That's not intra, intra bank payments. That's not B2B. <laughs> Muy linda, mi gente. So now here's the section I was talking about, just to give you an idea of who we're talking about when we're talking about uh, this company who is utilizing XLM. So here's an article from Cointelegraph.com, and it says participation from high profile investors in the region. These are individuals who are going to be going to be using XLM from this particular system that's made to replace Swift. And it goes as such. As reported, other investors included Japanese Seven Bank. Japanese Seven Bank. Remember that. Let's look into their financials. Don't. If I forget, you do it and, uh, or remind me. <laughs> okay. But let's look into their financials. Japanese Seven Bank, which owns, get this, which owns all the 7-Eleven stores in Japan. Didn't I just say that? Listen. If they actually go forward with using this system, once it's ready to be rolled out up and running, imagine all the 7-Elevens in Japan using XLM. Just think about that for a moment. Let me read that to you again. Participation from high profile investors in the region. As reported, other investors included Japanese 7 Bank, which owns all 7-Eleven stores in Japan and get this, nearly 69,000 200 convenience stores globally, 69,200. Do you think they want to use the SWIFT system? 
Or do you think they want to use this new XLM system? Doesn't XLM sound very good? It's so cheap. And on top of that, it doesn't take like three days or 30 days. If we're talking about, sometimes take 30 days when you're talking about B2B, cross-border ministers, holy smokes, so let's not even go there. Um, but in every possible way, XLM is more efficient at moving uh, your money back and forth than the Swift, Swift system. Do you believe that they won't use XLM over Swift system? Absolutely not. I know they're going to use XLM over the, over the Swift system if they're, if they're wise. And they already have it. They, are, they, they invested in it. <laughs> in the development of the system. So yeah, of course they're interested, of course. Nearly 69,200 convenience stores globally. Imagine if even a piece of them, you know, you know what, let's jump out the window, no parachute. Imagine if all 69,200 of them start using XLM, what does it do to that price? Does it raise, does it raise the does it raise? Can we, can we, one raise the toe? Let's just, can I get one, just one? Raise a toll. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I'm t I told you. I, t <laughs> I don't know who's patient out there. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. I don't know. I just know that when that explosion happens, ooh. Listen, I'm going to have to definitely set my watch alarm, my, my, my clock alarm, my computer alarm, everything, because I might go on a long vacation and forget about the channel. <laughs> right? I got come to the, come back to the channel. Uh, <laughs> set my alarms just to come back and do videos because ah, I'm going to take a nice, nice vacation. I'm talking about a vacation of a lifetime. All right. Uh, anyway, when that price explodes. But anyway, let's continue on here. It says as well as Hong Kong, Hong Kong based token fund company has key capital. Let's look into their financials also. Now we have some things to research. Look into their, their, their quarterlies. Let's see what they're working with, what, what they're all about. Hash key capital, but that's a very interesting, isn't it? Um, Hong Kong based token fund company, hash key capital. Daja hao, daja hao, that means everyone good. Hello, everyone. Daja hao. Singaporean blockchain uh, focus. Also, uh, I just want to, okay, so some of you might think that maybe I speak just a little bit of Mandarin, but no sik teng yakti guang dong wa. No sik teng yakti guang dong wa. My tone was a little bit off, but I also speak a little bit of Cantonese. Just in case you thought that I only probably speak a little bit of Mandarin, I speak a little bit of Cantonese and I try to learn Fujo, Fujonese, but uh, I, I can't remember any Fujo right now. I, my apologies. Um, right now, I've been studying a lot of, um, I, to, I know you're like, Afani, we don't want to hear about what you're studying right now. We want, we want the numbers and the research. <laughs> anyway, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, let me talk a little bit. Um, what was I? Oh, yeah, I've been studying a lot of Thai, Thailandese, uh, uh, Thai, Thai language. Um, anyway, continue on here. You're just distracting me. You guys always distracting me. What's going on here? We got to be professional. <laughs> anyway, so let's continue on here. Singaporean blockchain focused venture capital firm Signum Capital and Hong Kong based investment holding firm Uni President Asset Holding. So, more, more action from Hong Kong. Isn't that interesting when all over, uh, all over the news they're telling you, oh, well, well, China doesn't want to have anything to do with crypto. Seems to me like they don't have a problem utilizing XLM hmm? or investing in XLM. That's th this entire system is XLM. Isn't that interesting? OK, something to keep our eyes on. We have legs on the ground in Hong Kong. Now let's continue on here. And Hong Kong based investment holding firm, Uni President Asset Holdings, the latter reportedly owns 9,000 Starbucks. Money, 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 money. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Oh my goodness. Look, no, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't want to be, we're going to be too rich, all right? That's not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell nothing. I'm only speaking for Alphanim. That's it. I'm thinking about that money, the riches. Oh man, it doesn't take a lot. People own a ton of coins at this point. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot at this point to be very wealthy. <laughs> You're talking about the XRP holders, XLM, HBAR. People own a ton. It's just like, uh, I think the only coin holders who hold a ton of coins, sort of like what the banking coin holders do, is like VeChain. VeChain holders take it serious. They understand it's an enterprise coin, right? So VeChain holders also, oh man, I, in my humble opinion, 
VeChain holders are gonna make an, uh, an insane amount of money. And every VeChain holder I ever spoke to or know, uh, or know holds a ton of VeChain, but they're like the only ones that I've ever interacted with that come close to holding a ton of coins. I mean, a lot of coins. Sort of like how the banking coin holders also have a ton of coins. Um, and, I, and I believe the, the correlation is obviously they're both utility based and they're going to be needed. They're necessary, they're necessities, okay? But let's continue on. 9,000 Starbucks. I may not make another video today. This one is a long one. This is, I have to get all of this out, but when I do deep research-based videos, they can't be short. Um, you know, uh, just hopefully this is worth it because there's so many people out there using ad blocker. They're just blocking all of the ads. Like, so it's like you do the work, but you really don't get anything out of it sometimes. Um, but it's fun. I'll say that it is fun. Um, it says 9,000 star. Imagine if 9,000 star Starbucks were using systems, utilizing systems that um, required XLM or use XLM to move money back and forth cheaply. What does it do to that price? And the people would never know. And they would save so much money too. It says 9,000 Starbucks and 7-Elevens and, and across Taiwan, China, and the Philippines. LightNet CEO, this is a good name to have. I, I need to check, check this name out on or maybe Twitter or something. Suvicha Suchai, all right? LightNet CEO Suvicha Suchai noted that LightNet's primary platform has been completed so far, while the first transaction is scheduled for implementation um, for uh, Q1 2020, alongside the potential of 500,000 cash agents across the ecosystem. So I'm going to assume that, um, first of all, there, there, there's a lot of upgrades that had to take place. Second of all, infrastructure. Third of all, there's still the legalities, just like in America, just like in the United States. Um, there's a lot of legalities and such like that before you can fully roll anything out around the world. Um, they have much better systems, of course, of, of, of giving regulatory clarity, but it still takes time, takes patience. Um, the infrastructure still takes time to set up. So even if you are um, ready to roll something out, it doesn't mean that everybody else is. So it's sort of like what IBM is going to experience now. So IBM has their CBDC infrastructure ready to roll out right now, ready for banks to utilize now. However, they can't because of the lack of regulatory clarity. Um, the lack of education curve, they want, they, the people don't really know what they're doing yet. You have to train people. There's so many things that go into this. So, you know, you just have to have patience, um, have patience. And obviously things are going extremely well here at, at this particular time. So this is another little good bit and I, I think we'll end it right here. Lightness vice chairman says that 70% of the Asian population use cash or underground banking for financial transactions. Now, imagine if XLM or XRP, Hedera, there's enough money to go around for all of the banking coins. And I hold all of them, haven't sold one. Imagine there's enough money to go around. Imagine if we could scoop up all of that 70%. They're using some sort of banking currency, a uh, banking rail. And I, this is why I would like for all, I, I know XLM is in the region. I know XRP is starting to, Ripple is, is showing you that XRP is going to be felt in that region right now. They've, they've opened up a lot of new corridors over the last two months, but I would like everyone to be in there. Let's all, let's, let's all get in there. Algorand, I, they, and they may have something going on. They just didn't put it out yet. I understand that. But until then, I'm gonna say, I, I, will, I would like to see Algorand in there. In there. Um, Cello, I'd like to see you get in there. Let's get in there and dominate. Listen, the iron, it's, the iron is hot right now. Let's strike. Now is the time. Swift is on the ropes. The SEC is on the ropes. Now is our time. It's our time. Everything's looking great. And we only just begun 2022. Everything's looking amazing right now. So I think we're going to stop right here. <laughs> Anyway, um, also, to, I just want to say this. I put out a post for the members only uh, section. I know who is who at this point. I know who's been with me for a long time. For the members only section, I was asking people if they had any NFTs. And, I, and, I, and not NFTs that are attached to like um, any project like, well, if you, get, if you buy this NFT, you're going to get this. No, just raw NFTs where it's art and people might want to buy them. If they choose to trade them or sell them, that's on them. That's up to them, but it's just a standalone NFT is what you're offering, right? I was asking members if they had anything like that. So I could take a look at that on Twitter. If everything looks legit and it's just a standalone NFT that people, people can just buy a work of art, then I definitely would consider saying, hey, check this out on the channel. 
That's what I was saying. I'm, I'm trying to look out while I have the channel. I don't know what's going to happen because the channel has had massive ups and downs. And it's very tough keeping the channel going for, for I, my life outside of this is extremely busy. But while I have the channel, I'm trying to help everyone that uh, uh, as much as I can that show me any kind of respect or love. So that's why you saw certain people already. Those are the, and those are just the people that I know don't have a problem with me saying their product's name on the channel. Probably it, it'll benefit them or they can use uh, more uh, attention or such like that to whatever it is project that they're working on or doing, whether it's an NFT, Twitter space, whatever. But you saw what I did there and that's what I'm, I would like to do for the people in the members only section if they have something legit. Um, so that's why I put that post out there, right? If you have an NFT, hopefully maybe if I mention your NFT and it's legit, right? Um, maybe you can get some sales or something like that and that'll be a benefit to you. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Nobody responded to that post. So I, there's only so much I can do. And also, um, please forgive me. My Twitter's been flooded with messages. My, my email is flooded with messages right now. Um, so I'm just, I'm trying to keep up and catch up with everything. Keep in mind, this YouTube stuff is separate from my regular life. So I have a lot of stuff going on in regular life. Then I have this YouTube stuff is just exploding. And so I'm only one person. I don't have a team. There's no team for me. It's just I'm just one. So it takes me a lot. All these business emails. Then I have people emailing me just want to talk to me. Um, same thing with Twitter. <laughs> same thing. So I'm trying to keep up with everything. It's been a lot. So just bear with me if you can. If I can't, if I don't respond in time, please just bear with me. I'm doing the best that I possibly can. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? Hey, I got blue on today. Uh. I switched it up. See, I listen. I keep my ears open. So um, now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.